Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going through a question number two from the January 2022 Pure Mathematics P2 International A Level LXL paper. And this question is about the curve y equals 27x to the power of a half minus x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 20, where x is greater than 0. And we need to find dy dx, giving each term in its simplest form. So before we start differentiating, we should always make sure that the, the expression is compatible or in the right form for us to be able to differentiate it. And in this case, it is all the x terms are in the numerator and they're all written in index form, not in cert form. So we can just simply find dy dx right away. So I'll say dy dx equals, now when you differentiate an expression, we can differentiate each term separately. And each term is a type which we just multiply by the power. So a half times 27 x to the power of subtract one from the power half minus a half sorry half minus one is negative a half and then you're going to have three over two times minus one which is minus three over two times x to the power of if you take away one from three over two it's like taking away two over two from three over two which is a half again and if you differentiate a constant it gives you zero so this is let's just simplify it a little bit this is dy dx so dy dx is equal to a half times 27, which is 27 over 2, times x to the power of negative a half, minus 3 over 2, times x to the power of a half. Now, you could, if you want to, also write it in this form, which is a bit, you know, fine. You can write this as a positive power. So you can say, sorry, 27. 27 over 2x to the power of positive a half with the x to the power of half is in the denominator minus 3 over 2 and the x on the numerator to the power of a half. Both of these are perfectly fine. If I write this as my answer, this is my answer, they're both correct. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you write it in terms of in that. We can even write this as 27 over 2 root x minus 3 root x over 2. That'll also be fine because x to the power of a half is square root of x. Then it says, hence find the coordinates of the stationary point of C. Now, the stationary point is the point of zero gradient, either a maximum or a minimum or possibly a point of inflection where the gradient of the curve becomes zero. Maximum is like this, minimum is like this. Point of inflection can either be this type of point or something that looks like this. Okay, so it could be any of those. Now, the stationary point is the point, as I said, when the gradient, which is given by the gradient function dy dx, is equal to zero. When you differentiate a function, you find an expression that tells you the gradient of that function. So we want to find when the gradient of that function is equal to zero. So we equate dy dx to zero. So I have 27 over 2x to the power of a half minus 3 over 2x to the power of a half on the numerator equals zero. So to solve this equation, it looks a bit complicated, but the simple thing to do would be to get rid of the fractions. So the LCM of the fraction of the denominators here is 2x to the power of a half. So if I multiply this side by 2x to the power of a half, okay, what we'll get is the following. I'm multiplying this side by 2x to the power of a half. And I'm also multiplying this side by 2x to the power of a half. Okay, so on the left-hand side here, this, when it multiplies with this term, they will cancel out, leaving you with 27. And when you multiply these two, the twos will cancel out, leaving you with 3 times x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half is x to the power of 1, which you can write as x. And of course, you multiply 0 with anything, it stays as 0. So now we can solve this simple equation. We have 27 equals 3x. So x is 27 over 3, so x is equal to 9. So that's the x coordinate. They ask us to find the coordinates. So we don't only just leave it as the x coordinate, we need to find the y coordinate. And this was the original equation of our curve. So to find the y coordinate, we can simply just replace the, the x in this with 9. So 27, now to the power of a half means the square root of. So it's 27 to, uh, times the square root of x minus, and this by the laws of indices, you have minus x, okay? Now, what this means is the denominator is the root, so it's square root of x, and the numerator is the power. If you remember from our understanding of indices, this means 
this numerator, the, the, sorry, the power is a numerator of the index form and the root is the denominator. So this means the square root of x cubed. Okay, and then you've got your minus 20. So y is equal to now 27. Now, as I said, we're going to have the square root of 9 minus the square root of 9 cubed minus 20. So y is going to be 27 times the square root of 9 is 3 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 cubed is that's going to give you 27. And you're going to have minus 20. So 27 times 3 minus 27. Well, that's... 327s minus 220 minus 127, which is 227s, which is 54. 54 minus 20 is going to be 34. So the coordinates of the point are 9 and 34. That's the point, the stationary point of C. Okay, so that's the stationary point of this stationary point. 934. Okay, there's the answer to part b of this question and now for part c okay part c says find d squared y dx squared and hence determine the nature of the stationary point so we need to find the first differential which we already found here and i'll take it in this form it will let me yes it will so let me take this over here okay so this is the first differential d squared y dx squared is when you take the first differential and you differentiate it a second time. So here I can multiply by a negative a half. So this is giving me negative 27 over 4. And then I take 1 from the power. That gives me negative 3 over 2 minus. And then I'm going to, again, multiply by the power. So I'll have a half times minus 3 over 2, which is negative 3 quarters. x to the power of negative a half. That's the expression for my second differential. If I rewrite this to make it look a bit more easier to substitute, this would be a minus 27 over 4 times the square root of x cubed minus 3 over 4 times the square root of x. Okay, that's going to be the second differential Okay, of this. And we want to find the nature of the stationary point of C. Now, the reason why finding d squared y dx squared is useful for us in finding the nature of the stationary point first of all what do they mean by the nature of the stationary point they mean is it a maximum is it a minimum is it a point of inflection that's what they mean now if you have a maximum the gradient of this curve okay is changing the whole time now when you have a maximum, the gradient is positive in the beginning. It becomes zero, and then it becomes negative. So the rate, the way the gradient is changing, or you could say the rate of change of the gradient, is going to be negative because it is decreasing. The gradient is going from positive to zero to negative. So in this case, the, the second differential, d squared y dx squared, is going to be less than zero when you have a maximum. When you have a minimum, the opposite is taking place. You're starting off with a negative gradient, which becomes zero and then becomes positive. So when you have a minimum, the second differential is greater than zero. It's increasing the gradient. It's going from negative to positive. All right, so if we can find for our value of x, which was when x equals 9, when x equals 9 was a stationary point, then the x value of the stationary point, when x equals 9, if we can find the value of d squared y, dx squared, whether it's positive or negative, then we can determine whether or not this is a maximum or a minimum, or whether it is a maximum or a minimum. So if I, if I substitute x equals 9 into our equation, 3 over 4 times the square root of 9, so this is going to give me minus 27 over, well, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 cubed is 27, so it's 4 times 27. Okay, minus, and this is 3 over 4 times 3, because the root of 9 is 3. So we can see what happens here. The 27 cancels with the 27. The 3 cancels with the 3. You're left with minus a quarter and minus another quarter, which is minus a half. So we can say that d squared y over dx squared is equal to negative half. So we can say, therefore, d squared y over dx squared is less than 0, 
Therefore, okay, the point 934, 934 is a maximum point. Why? Because d squared y dx squared was less than zero, was negative. Okay, so that's how we can understand how to find um, or determine the nature of the stationary point. If it was, if d squared y dx squared for the value of x, our stationary point, was positive, we would have a minimum. If negative, we have a maximum. Why is it a maximum? Because at a maximum, the gradient, the rate, the gradient is changing in such a way that it's going from positive to negative. So you can say that the second differential, the rate of change of gradient is negative. It's decreasing. Okay, so there we have the answer to question two, part C, which concludes question number two. Um, other questions from this particular um, paper of January 2022 can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area over here. Other questions um, to do with um, differentiation of P2 can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.